Oh, hi everyone. I'm uh, Acting Regional Crime Coordinator for the Metropolitan South Region. I'm here today to talk about the launching of Project Hoodie Free Zone. Uh, that project was initiated in the Wynnum Police District by some uh, active police officers down there that were uh, investigating uh, armed robberies there in recent times. Um, the project is targeted at uh, people covering their faces uh, essentially when uh, they go into high-risk premises such as service stations. So when we say a project, uh, a hoodie-free zone, we're really uh, talking about people cooperating with us just to be mindful of the risk to staff at these high-risk premises and uh, to be mindful not to cover their faces. We're aware that we can't force people to not wear hoodies or such garments, but uh, we're just trying to highlight this to the community. You're asking shopkeepers to put up certain displays as well, aren't you? Part of the project uh, will be to, yes, um, uh, display a sign, reminding members of the public to be uh, mindful of covering their faces uh, with hoodies and the like. Um, we were just discussing this early. Yes, uh, they often do use a hoodie uh, to cover their face, but they can also use shirts. Flannelette shirts are, are often used, um, but there's been a number of things. I think uh, someone said today bubble wrap was used. So they use a lot of things, but certainly hoodies, the hood cover, is often used, yes. And in that district, have there been many crimes where offenders have worn Yes, since January this year there's been a number where they've used them. Um, a number of offences have been used in that manner. Um, I must add too that this was initiated in Wynnum. It's not because Wynnum is, you know, high, has a high occurrence of armed robberies any more than anywhere else in the state. And in fact this initiative we hope to go statewide if it's success successful. Sorry. You're hoping that if you ask people not to pull their hoodies up they'll be more easily identifiable on closed-circuit television cameras? Yes, certainly, and to customers, uh, potential witnesses, and obviously the people that are uh, at risk, the people that are manning these uh, premises primarily after hours. Now, if you're planning to introduce this initiative on Friday, what response have you had from business owners, shopkeepers, and the general community in Wynnum so far? Uh, in fact, this project is in the planning phase. We're not... Uh, intending to launch it until next month. So um, obviously we've had some concern from some people think, why Wynnum? Well, Wynnum is, as I said, it's only Wynnum because the police there have shown this initiative. They've come forward to our uh, project team in Metropolitan South and we've embraced it. We think it's a great initiative and we, in fact, can see this going statewide. Do you think it could go national as well? Uh, I'm not sure about that. We've only discussed on a statewide basis at this stage. I mean, it is a, an extension of years ago. There was people were walking walking into these premises that are at risk with helmets. I think we all recall those days and uh, the risk that was associated with that, that. So this is really extension of that. Would you hope, if you're saying it, um, you, you hope it to go statewide? Would you want it to be made legislation so that you can charge people, or would it only ever stay at the advisory level? Oh, look, we we're not in the business of making. Uh, legislation and what people wear or anything, it's not intended to that at all. People can wear what they like and we're not about that. We're just interested in community safety and making people aware that by all means wear a hoodie, but when they go into these premises not to actually have the hood up would for obvious also, reasons. Would you also consider introducing a similar initiative for people wearing burkas? Uh, well, no, this isn't um, targeted at any ethic or religious uh, group. Um, obviously, um, uh, we're not targeting that. The concern is with hoodies. Yeah. Has there ever been a crime of anyone wearing a burqa in a store? Not, not to my knowledge. Do you think that these um, store attendants who are at risk might inadvertently agitate some of the young people who wear hoodies into the store by asking them to remove them? Uh, that's always a possibility. But as, again, I'm sure... But people are aware these days of uh, uh, the risk of armed robberies and, and I just ask people to be mindful of the concern of these people after hours. Obviously they are very frightened. We've done a number of, well, we've researched a lot of premises and they're all for this project, obviously, uh, for obvious reasons. And uh, yes, whilst that might happen, but uh, 
again, we don't like to think they'd be considerate of these attendants. Tell us about stickers. Um, they'll have like a, is it a height reader on it and those sort of things? Or? Um, as part of this, when we launch this we're, uh, with our project team, we've, uh, we're, we're hoping to have a package, if you like, where there'll be height um, gauges on the uh, doors so they can assist investigations. Uh, there will be a sticker saying no hoodie type thing with the no mobile phones that you see in service stations. And also we're, like, we're hoping to incorporate a, uh, or provide a uh, seminar, if you like, where people can come and, and have a, receive a lecture off our people in relation to armed robberies and what they should do as so far as you know, crime prevention. Yes, well, they, store owners are, obviously they can, uh, we would support store owners if there was an issue in that regard. Um, they can refuse entry to places, particularly after hours. A lot of these premises now have got locks on the doors and I would suggest that the staff would be uh, mindful of anyone covering their face and if anyone did have a face covered they wouldn't allow them entry and uh, that's the prerogative of the uh, business people. How are you going to go about monitoring Um, we, 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 as part of any project, we uh, research it and we do an assessment at the end of it to see how effective it is. Obviously, we've got, we've, we have our crime statistics and what have you, and uh, we'll do certain analysis to see if it's effective or not. Now, you said you're going to introduce it next month, which is next month, July 1 yes. Friday. So yes. when next month? It's not Friday. Uh, that hasn't been determined as yet. Um, the project team's got to discuss that and... Uh, there's obviously printing uh, things and different... Uh, we want to discuss it further with the community. At this stage, we've only discussed it with the most high risk, the service stations and the 7-Elevens and your like. So we want to extend that, uh, who we discuss it with before we actually launch it. Do you have any proof? Like, have you looked at it being used overseas or anything like that? Like, any good stats or proof on whether it works? Uh, I haven't, no. I don't, haven't seen any stats in that regard. Uh, that hasn't been approved at this stage, but uh, we've got certainly got some in place. But uh, uh, I'll check afterwards if you like and see if we can provide that. Uh, they're not supposed to be available till Monday, so I just don't know. What? What? What made the police in Wyndham come up with this initially? Why did they want it so badly? Uh, if you cast your mind back a couple of months ago, we had a Operation Magnetic, which was an, a lot of armed robberies on service stations across the, the southern side of Brisbane and the Gold Coast. Uh, the in, uh, investigators there decided that they would visit on Labor Day, in fact, on the 2nd of May this year. They visited every, uh, for want of a better term, soft target um, or high-risk premises. They went to every one of them. Uh, Every one of those premises were concerned of this face concealing thing. Uh, about half the premises were held up with people using, covering their face with the hood of a jacket. So from that, the crime prevention people came to the uh, project team with this initiative. So it's an excellent initiative on their behalf. Yes, most definitely they're agitated, particularly late at night uh, when these premises are at highest risk. Anyone that comes in there, because of their experience and what they've been trained with um, and what we've... A lot of our people go around and speak to these people. Obviously, to be watched for anyone that is covering their face. Um, so they are, yes, most definitely agitated by anyone that has their face covered with anything, in, not only just a hoodie. So you're happy? Fear to these people that are attendants, and not only attendants, the customers. Um, I was saying before, like, we've all been in a situation where you go into a service station, if someone walks in with a helmet, um, you know, obviously you're going to be agitated. So it's not only the staff who are at most at risk, but it's also the customers. Mm. Would you wear a hoodie? Beg your pardon? Would you wear a hoodie? Uh, certainly would, particularly this time of year, but not in one of these premises here, yeah. no. 
Yeah, I think you just got to be considerate of these people. Most people we found in hooded stayed for the same thing. Like we spoke to every single person wearing a hoodie, and they said they would never wear it above their head into a shop out of respect to the people at the shop. Yeah, kind of great. Yeah, well, there you go. Yes. That's our feedback too. So, yeah. And it's pretty hard to find sweatshirts that don't aren't made with hoodies at the back end. That's right. Yes. Exactly right. Yes. yes. And that's what I say. We're not saying don't wear a hoodie. It's just be considerate where you put the hood up. You know. And just to clarify, high risk um, stores in particular, you're targeting such as Servos, 24 hour convenience stores. Yes. That sort of thing. Yeah, that type of thing. Is yeah. It, where yeah. The district or Wynnum? Oh, Wynnum Police District is where we'll be launching it, yes, yeah, yeah. So that covers Wynnum, Manly... Cleveland, yeah. Lota. Uh, Redland Bay, that area, yeah. yeah. And is there any um, estimate on how many hold-ups there have been since January in that district where people have worn hoodies? Uh, I'd have to get those figures back to you late uh, after. I've got the rough figures. Yeah. I think there's something like... And I'm only guessing there's about 14, and I think about half of them will use hoodies. Yep. And some of them are still outstanding, the offenders. So it's Wynnum, Manly, Cleveland Bay, Lota, Redland Bay, Thornland, Thornston, Calabar, yeah? Yep, all that area. Rod Chandler. Yeah. Um, it's quite a big district. It's quite a way. Yeah, it is, distance wise, yeah. Oxley District is next, and then Brisbane Central. Um, I'm not sure, yeah. but we want Oxley and South Brisbane District to come online. Depending how the trial goes in Wynnum. Yeah. 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 How, long, how long is the trial for in Wynnum? Uh, I think we're going to try it for a month, Anna. Oh. Yeah, about a month. And you don't just have to be a servo to put up a thing. You can, you can be just a normal shop. Yeah, we're not targeting premises in general. It's just the high-risk ones like we've just outlined. Yeah. So it won't be general businesses. Uh, it's just the high-risk ones. But can they do that if they so choose? Certainly. Yeah. Certainly, yes. No, no. Well, at this stage, they haven't requested it, and we're not—they're not the targets, the higher risk ones. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.